Hello, this is Sonia Roseman. I am at Costa the Webspoons in Rochester, Kent, um, and I'm going to do about 20 or 30 questions, just random stuff. Um, we are MarsonFilms.com. Hello. Hello. Okay, we'll start you off question number one. What are you wearing today? Uh, in what way? <laughs> Perfume, clothes, this whole ensemble? Uh, Chanel number no. 5. Because it's the truth. <laughs> okay. What was your last dream or your last night? Oh, it was yesterday. Um, and it was about being homeless and losing my flat, which is always what my dreams are about. I, was, I woke up and I was absolutely terrified. I have a lot of those. What currently is on your CD in your car? Um, oh, 1960s music, because I absolutely adore that era. Um, and it is the kinks for all day and all of the night. Uh, good choice. Which celebrity would you have as a dinner party? Male or female? Do one of each. Uh, okay. I would. Well, oh, there's quite a few. Do I have to just pick one? Yes. James Dean. And the female one? Marilyn Monroe. Of course. Of course. Okay. What comment has hurt you lately that someone said to you? Oh, um, it was, you're no actress and, and you don't make films and the only films that you make are porno films because you're so untalented. Untalented. I can't say the word. Untalented. That made me a bit nervy that one. Quite so. Who is the love of your life? My mummy. And my pussy cat. What are the reasons why, apart from the obvious reasons? <sighs> oh, because my mum has always been there for me and we have such a, an amazing bond. Uh, oh God, so many reasons, so many reasons, but I absolutely adore her, I love my mum. Um, and I love my pussycat because she's my best friend and I wake up with her every morning, go to bed with her every night. Um, Where'd you I get her from? Um, I got her from Breadhurst. Uh, uh, the cat sanctuary and she cost me 20 pounds and she was the best 20 pounds that I ever ever spent and her name is Little Girl and her name is Mrs Robinson and she is 14 and she's adorable. What is the worst mistake in your life? Oh well, I've made quite a few actually. Um, Give me a bit of a bit more of a genre. Okay, so how about firstly what's the worst mistake you've made in your sort of career or sort of what you do with films and things like that? Um maybe not pushing myself so much when I was younger, but I'd never had the money to go to auditions and when I did go to auditions in London it would cost me quite a lot of money and I wouldn't get them anyway and I kind of lost uh, a bit of myself from going to those, you know, it takes something away from you when you really don't get the jobs and you don't get the work and you so so want that job so much and somebody else gets it and you come away and you know it's only, it's only so much it really it just you know it, it does you it really be a kid guy and it and how about going. regards to family or parents or some something close to you what's the biggest mistake you had in your life uh, I should have spent more time with my, my dad when he was alive and uh, not fell out with him so much but the thing is we were quite um, Quite the same really, quite, you know, like you would be. I'm, I'm very much like my dad in certain ways, a bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Stubborn. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stubborn and like, that's it, I'll do it my way and he was exactly the same and then that sort of goes into years and sometimes, you know, only a couple of months at a time of not speaking and then one day they pass away and you wish that you could take that time back. And, uh, it's been uh, a learning curve for me, a painful one, but I wish I could do that, yeah. Okay. Um, what could you do to help society or mankind? Sterilisation. Around <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's enough people having babies around here, isn't there? I don't think I need to add to it. And plus, anyway, I am an auntie a number of times, so therefore, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
What is the best day you've ever had of your life and why? Um, there's been so many, I can't I couldn't really pick one out as such. I Every time that I'm on, I'm on a film set, I think I'm so lucky and very, very blessed to even be able to to live out my dream to a certain extent, writing my own films, that kind of thing. That, that is, you know, it's never just one day. They're the best days and happiest days for you. Yeah, 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 to do what you can actually, that you actually really want to do as opposed to like having to go and work, for instance, in an office or somewhere. What you don't really want to do, but you've got to do to make money. I actually, you know, I'm very, very blessed, blessed indeed. Okay, the, uh, the flip side to that. What's your worst day and why? Worst day, uh, without a doubt, you know what that was. When my dad passed away. Yeah. Okay, continuing on. Um, next question is, if you wasn't an actress, what would you be? A criminal psychologist, because I absolutely love everything about serial killing and how they go into the forensics of it afterwards. I think I'd be pretty good at that. And so many films that I see lately, or before I've even, well, and books that I've, I've read, that kind of thing, I know what's going to happen, and I know who it is before, you know. Do you think you missed your calling apart from acting in life then? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have to have a brain for that, you know, it switches up after a while. I am blonde, you know. This is very true. <laughs> <laughs> Flat <-minded. laughs> What's the naughtiest thing you ever did and that you didn't get caught for? Oh, yeah. name it. Well, <laughs> uh, what, lately or...? Okay, let's go one from the past and one from the present. Uh, past a few months ago, I was in a car and somebody bumped into a lamppost. The lamppost was turned over and somehow police wasn't called and, and that kind of thing and that was got away with and that was very very lucky. Hello! Um, yeah, we're filming. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and that, that wasn't found out so don't tell anyone okay? Yeah, uh, that was fun, yeah. And one well, from the past. I don't know, I'm, I'm quite mischievous, I'm quite naughty and I, I can't help it, it's just the way I am. I don't mean to be so naughty, but even now, at my age, I've always been this way, I just have that, I try to behave, honestly I do, it's just that I have this streak in me that Is it makes, you get bored to it makes me misbehave. <laughs> okay, do you literally have any regrets? Yeah, I, I think everyone does, everyone has regrets, um, but you just have to deal with it. If you make a mistake, then you've got to get on. I, I, I think that's the only thing, only thing you can say about that really, isn't it? You, you're thinking about something in particular? Well, I'm thinking, obviously, the things with your dad are yeah. obvious, but how about things in, say, like, your love life, for example? Uh, was there somebody that you should have gone out with that you didn't? Or was there something you should have said to somebody that you didn't? I waste too much time on whoever it is that I'm going out with in particular. I said before in, in the last uh, biography that we did in sort of part one, this is part two, that I have such terrible bad luck in, in my love life. And I tend to think, I don't know if it's me or whatever, but I, I waste far too much time on somebody. And when they start to hurt me or it falls apart, whether it's my fault or their, their fault, because it's, it's, it's never completely one way, there's it's, it's always two sides to a story, isn't there? Um, I just waste far too much time and I end up staying three or four years, five years, and I should have left when it starts to, to fall apart because then you, you end up looking back at your life and thinking, my goodness, I've had quite a lot of bad relationships. Obviously, I've had good ones too, and I wish them all the best. But I'd stay and I stay and I stay because I actually believe, unfortunately, uh, 
that yeah. it's it's kind of it's going to work yeah. itself out, or someone will change, or they'll stop cheating, or whatever. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are you most proud of? In what way? You choose anything. Yeah. Just if it's a, what instantly comes to mind when you I ask that question. I'm proud of the films that I've made, um, obviously. Um, I'm proud that I've written a lot of films. And I'm kind of proud as well that well, people have a perception of me because uh, the blonde hair and I like to look glamorous and, you know, look quite ample chested, which people think are fake, but, you know, some people are actually born with a big chest, you know, the only thing that's fake about me is my hair. But I'm very proud that I look a certain way, but actually I can write these films and I can direct and I can act and get these people involved and get these people together, which would be many different jobs if um, if you was with a, a big film company, i.e., you, you know, well, whatever. Do you know what I mean? The BBC, Channel 4, it'd be one job per person, but I do all of this myself and with the help of Colin Marison, my cameraman, my editor, my other film half. And yeah, that, that's nice. So yeah, have the perception of the blonde bimbo, but really I'm not, because at the end of the day, I actually do have brown hair, and it's a bit like what Dolly Parton said, you know, um, you know, she's not actually a brunette, you know. I'm not that blonde and I'm not that thick, but there we are. What do you wish you had that you haven't got? Money. <laughs> Money and if I had that and if we could make something more of our films, if we had a whole bunch of money thrown at us, like sponsorship, something like that, we could really, really get these films out. Or even remake them or go into certain scenes like in Operation Omar, our World War II film, uh, to do the ADR on it. There's, uh, there's so many films that I'm so proud of, but if we had money and great big cameras and more help, then we could really, really make these absolutely just fantastic, you know, because we've got the creative buzz there, we work with so many wonderful creative people that we could really do a lot more than what we have, but I'm not complaining, I'm not saying for a minute that they're not good, but they could be spectacular, really. Okay. What do you think you would have been in a previous life? A dinosaur. <laughs> How about like um, job wise? If you were like back in the day, and what else would you have been? Oh, I don't know really. Uh, I went to uh, one of those past life, you know, like a regression thing. I went to one of those ones, uh, and literally the memories, if they were memories, came back to me as if it was something like like Oliver, something like that, and I was very poor and around in the 14 or 1500s and uh, the doctor was saying to me, he said, uh, the hypnotist person, he said, what can you see? And I said, I can see some words. I said, but I can't understand what, what, the, what they mean, what they mean. So, um, and he said, oh, what it is is that you can't read. And I thought, okay, well, I'm not educated. And I remember something about a big, big house, like a big mansion. And I lived in a, a very small, like a shed thing out the back. And I was a little boy. Um, and I would work in the kitchen, like going to the market and fetching things. But no, I wasn't allowed to go in the front door, you know, where the, where the lady of the house and where the people lived. But I remember that. And, uh, and he also said to me, he said, look down, look down at your feet, which you have on your feet. And I didn't have like a nice pair of shoes, you know, with laces and things like that. I had like a pair of old kind of moccasin type of shoe, maybe, I don't think there was even leather, but like dirty, dirty, skinny, scrawny legs, um, and it was something like that, so I don't even know if that was true, but that's what I could see in my in my brain, so there we are, yeah. Alright? What do you want from life? Stability, security, love, money, not lots of money, but that would be nice, but not to be poor and, and not to have to worry about bills and 
all the things that everybody else wants really. But everybody else it seems, you know, quite a lot of people are much more secure in their life and have all the things that I would like. Like love, which I never seem to have, it just it eludes me all the time, unfortunately. Well here's a less serious question. What did you have for breakfast? Oh I had a cheese and curry toasty and it was really nice. I know it's a bit, you know, yeah, but it was really nice. It was lovely flush. You like cooking and making stuff up anyway, don't you? I do, I really like to cook, yeah. Love to cook. How would you describe yourself? In a good way or bad way? Both. Um, what's your best traits? What's your, what's your worst traits? In a good way, I, I suppose loyal. Um, I try to make people laugh, even when I'm not feeling so good myself. And if I can make people laugh, then it makes me feel better. Um, bit, bit wild when I shouldn't be. Bit crazy. Um, but on the bad side, very insecure. I get hurt by people when they say things. But I try to just go, you know what? Forget it. Because if you, if you live like that, then literally I could never go out. Especially when people put the films down that we do, or my acting, or say that, you know, I, somebody like you could never get anywhere. And to that, I just go, up your bum. Okay. What are you most scared of? Losing my mum. Losing my mum, uh, being poor, being homeless. Having nothing, this is what my bad dreams are about. And this goes back to not having security and that, that kind of thing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It, it absolutely terrifies me. Is there anything silly that scares you, like the dark or spiders or. No. No, fair enough. Not really. There's a lot of things that really don't scare me that scare a lot of other people, like parking tickets. <laughs> That's a fine example. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is your favourite song? I've got too many favourite songs. Real enough. George Michael, Father Figure. Um, oh, crikey, there's just so many. Lots of 1960s songs, uh, Jimi Hendrix songs, The Kinks, uh, The Doors, Love Her Madly, um, LA Woman, uh, Love Street. Oh, so many, so many. Oh God, I um, like lots of dance music as well. And a couple of rap songs, a couple, you know. I've heard several genres that I really like, I like classical music too. Yeah, but I couldn't, I couldn't just pin it down to one. What do you hate about people in general? Um, that they can be so judgmental, um, with without even actually knowing somebody. I think people these days are quite materialistic and very uncaring. There's also a lot of people that really are very caring, but a lot of the people that I know aren't, aren't really that way. And I find that very hard to get my head around because I don't feel like them. I don't feel like these people from this modern time at all. I feel quite old fashioned. I feel like I, I'm from another time, like born too late. So you feel like you don't fit in? Yeah, I really do feel like I don't fit in at all. I've never felt like I've fitted in anywhere really. And that's the truth. It would be nice though to fit in somewhere. It's kind of it's hard always just, just feeling that you're on your own and wanting to fit in and you just and you and you don't. Okay. Okay, on the flip side of that, what do you love most about people? When people can be kind and, and look through what they see on the outside, like a, a mask that someone wears, they can see through like into the soul. And I usually tend to find that people that can actually see somebody tend to be the creative people, you know, like artists or people like us, people like us, um, that actually give somebody a chance as opposed to seeing somebody and, and, and just seeing the cover and going, look at them or ooh, look at her. Like, for instance, like bitchy women who look you up and down and go, I can't stand that, I can't stand that. And thank God I wasn't brought up like that at all. I will say if someone's beautiful or not or handsome or not, and I can see through 
the outside and usually get through to someone. It's nice to see someone so on actually look through and see them properly. But a lot of people just don't do that. They don't do that. And face value is not something that I take people for. And I don't. Um, if I hear something about somebody, I won't say, oh, I hate that person too. I will go and speak to them. I make my own mind up about people. Whereas a lot of people are just like, to use David Icke's, one of his words, sheeple. You know, and they just go with the crowd. But I think that's wrong. I think you should make your own decisions about people. You know. Okay. So, what would you say are people's perceptions of you? Um, blonde, bimbo, fake tits. You know, sorry, boobs, breast. But I'm not. You know, I can't stand that. I can't stand that. But that's their perception, and. Let them get on with that because if that's what they feel, then therefore I could only impress them when they actually come and talk to me or not. But sometimes, like mainly women, it's, there's so there's a lot of women that really don't like me, even though I haven't done anything. And I've always, always had this problem. But yet, if there was a friend of mine, they actually sp spoken to me, not just looked at me as from you know the giggly blonde then they'd see much further into that. But then again, I don't want to be friends with people like that. I don't like fake people. I don't like bitchy women. I don't like bitchy guys. So, you know, sod it. Yeah, that's true. Apart from um, your films, yeah. what would you like to be remembered for most? Uh, being a nice person, being a bit misunderstood, maybe. But... My films, that's that's my le my legacy, that's all I have. Um, I'm never going to have children, I don't think, because I can't carry, there's something wrong in there. Um, and anyway, you have to have a boyfriend and to have all that kind of thing. Yeah, that's my legacy and I leave those and I'm, I'm proud of those. And it's not the end yet, you know, I'm not, nowhere near finished in making these films and documentaries. And we are marsonfilms.com. Cheesy grin. <laughs> what do you uh, really appreciate in life? In what way? Again. What do, you, what do you appreciate most in life when you wake up in the morning? What are you most thankful for? I'm thankful that I have a roof under my head and I'm thankful that I live in a country where um, it's safe to be a woman and not be sexualized or you've got to cover up you know and you've got to be less than you are and you've got to adhere to somebody and you've got to be a second class citizen i appreciate that i'm not in a country where i, I get raped or something like that or by a husband that kind of thing i'm i'm very very lucky like we all are in this country to to be free to have freedom of, of speech all of that i'm i'm very lucky to be able to make the film and put these out there. I'm lucky to even be able to do this interview right now and say exactly how I feel, have a voice, which you know, hundred odd years ago, a bit more than that, we didn't even have a voice as women. So I appreciate so many things, but to have a roof over my head and not to be homeless and have a little bit of money, even though I'm not rich, I appreciate so much. And to have my mum still here and my good friends and to have wonderful people to work with, which I absolutely love all of you guys. I, you know, I'm very, very so grateful just to, you know, just to have these people in this, this life, even though it's not quite the way I'd like, but I am grateful a hundred million percent every day. Yeah. What do you want from your love life? I'd like to have a love life, really. <laughs> I would like to have somebody who is just for me, who doesn't cheat on me with a second woman or a third woman and I have to find out horrible things. I don't want someone that cheats, I don't want somebody that smashes up my flat if we have an argument or hits me for me being too gobby or mouthy. I'm, I just, I'd like someone that doesn't see me as a sex object, even though sex and making love is a wonderful thing but just to be seen as a as a human being would be nice I, you know just to have someone just for me and it seems to me that i can't can't find that 
in all these years and I thought I was going to be like Liz Taylor and be married like 10 times and maybe have Richard Burton that I go back to and get married to again and again and again but it hasn't happened it's it's so strange the way my life has panned out and I I kind of tend to think that some people are meant to have someone in their life to love them and some of us just are not that's the unfortunate thing but you know I keep trooping on with the films you know I have that side but I don't really have someone to go home to and cuddle up with and just watch films and things you know the simple things that everyone takes for granted I've said this before but, but I, I don't because I think I'm a bimbo yeah, I'm stupid <laughs> I'm just a bit nuts has someone hurt you lately and how? Yeah, yeah. A uh, person that I was seeing and known for a very, very, very long time uh, has hurt me a great deal by going back to the girlfriend, said he was never going to go back to, then I find out there's somebody else as well. It's just, yeah, very painful, and so I lash out, which I shouldn't really do, and I tend to do it on Facebook when I'm upset at night time and it makes me look like a friggin uh, nutcase I suppose but it's only because I'm hurting and I don't I don't like being hurt nobody does and nobody wants to be the third or the fourth woman let alone the second you know it's uh, it doesn't make me feel so good it makes me feel rather insecure and I just think uh, I'm just not meant to have anybody uh, never mind has someone made you happy lately and why yeah, oh god, this is, it was kind of embarrassing yesterday actually, I was walking down Star Hill and uh, some guy walked past me and went, Oi, oi, and I was like, who's he, who's he talking to, who's he shouting at, and I turned around and he was actually like shouting at me, he said, Oi, you're the local actress aren't you, and I said, uh, yeah. I went to your your premiere, your screening, and I said, oh, thank you very much. How are you? How are you, love? And I, and I was like, oh, yeah, very good. But he, he, he was shouting it, and it was so powerful. I was like, oh, my God, who is this nutcase? But it was it was nice but embarrassing at the same time. So maybe we're getting slightly, slightly recognised, which is good, which is good. So we're getting somewhere, like at least one person recognised me. Mm. Right, final question. Yeah. If there's something you could tell people that's very important, what would it be? Always grill with the door shut, on the oven. <laughs> Literally, I bought an oven a few months ago and there was a big sticker on the front, always grill with the door shut. I mean, to be fair, we always grill with the door open, don't we? So it's one of these things in life that everybody needs to know that we knew. But, no, not really. Um, I guess... Uh, have dreams. Um, try to fulfil your dreams, even if you do it on a small level. It's and be kind to people who are kind to you. Um, forgive people. Not all the time if they're if they're absolutely dreadful to you, but forgive and uh, don't remain angry. That's what I would say, even though it's tough. And try and keep the good things around you, and try try to try to be nice in a world where. A lot of people are quite mean and cruel, especially around here at Medway. But that's what I would say. Yeah. Oh yeah. And if, if you're um, if you're putting your lipstick on, just a makeup tip. Overline. You don't have to have your lips done then. Overline slightly, and it looks like um, yeah. Okay. Remember. Keep them peeled. Sure, Taylor said that. Piece five. 1980s. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Oh, well, thank you very much then, um, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Much love. Remember www.marsonfilms.com. Thank you, Colin Marison from the camera. You're the welcome. Camera. Uh, thank you, Steve Blakelock, with a beautiful narrator presenter, question asker. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thanks. Mr. President.